everybody. So uh, I thought I'd be doing this video about uh, this article that I recently read about, um, well, basically corporate influence that is trying to kill Linux as it always has been since day one, just like Mac has been doing. Um, so yeah, they're just going to basically act like Gestapo, the Gestapo because they think that they have an entitlement to every bit of code on your computer. So keep that in mind next time you boot up your Windows and or Mac and or Android device. They don't want you to have the rights to control your own uh, computer. They want to use your computer to stalk you and fucking, again, illegally search you when they have no warrant and etc. cetera. We, we all know these things. We know about the NSA now. And again, people will always just say that ignorant fucking like conservatard bullshit of well I'm not doing anything wrong I don't care if they they track me so somehow that's conservative they, they're somehow they're they're anti they're for they're small government and yet they want every fucking goddamn government they basically want a gigantic government organization to track us because they're afraid of terrorists when they really don't care about any of the Christian terrorists but they only care about Islamic terrorists anyways so let's go ahead and read this so the corrupting influence of money in the Linux Foundation Bias for sale. When enemies of the GPL, GNU, like Linux, or sorry, like Microsoft and VMware, not just GNU Linux friendly companies like Red Hat, pay the Linux Foundation to get their way. So, the level of entryism at the Linux Foundation has become way beyond acceptable, and and now that only corporations are involved in decision making, we expect to see the verge of the farcical, the farcical. How long before the Linux Foundation is not even pro-Linux, but is instead pro-industry, for the industry giants that fund and thus dominate it? Or put it another way, will it endorse things irrespective of the very spirit of both Linux and GNU? Whether something is, is or is not free open source software and whether it promotes GNU Linux? You know something is very wrong when the paid for keynote speech at the biggest Linux conference is given by the company that calls Linux cancer and continues to attack Linux to this date. That's like having Donald Trump at the Democrats convention campaigns. We have been trying to write more about patents, especially at, about the EPO, which is the European Patent or, um, Organization. Um, and uh, so not many uh, articles mention Linux or, or talk about Microsoft these days. Microsoft's latest patent attacks on free software are revealing. Microsoft says it loves Linux loves Linux but it's I know definitely about just just an aside I know all about this um, they, they, they've started doing this with Skype now where of course they haven't up, updated the Linux version of Skype in three years but they pretend to give a shit by making a uh, web-based version that's really really crappy and pretending that it's for Linux users so that's that's cute anyways uh, but it attacks Linux on on but it's attacks on Linux definitely carry on so the following points were mentioned a, a lot over the past two weeks, but we finally decided to write an article about it because the sponsored articles for Linux Founda Foundation founders continue to come out from the Linux Foundation's website. This disclosure says, I, so this is basically, this is just a, uh, another article here. So if you want to read this, if you want to read the, any of this here, you can, you know, obviously, uh, let me, I'll, I'll go ahead, I'll post a link in, in the description is what I'll do, make it easier for everybody. So. Why is the Linux Foundation simply morphing into a mouthpiece? Why? For example, is it willing to publish Microsoft's lies? Just because Microsoft pays for it doesn't mean it's ethical or worthwhile. It reminds us of the years when Microsoft used, meaning exploited, Novell for Microsoft marketing. I've exchanged nearly a dozen emails about this with Stallman, meaning Richard Stallman, this past week, and he too was concerned about it. The main subject of this article is actually VMware, a company that has been notorious for GPL violations, that's the general public license, uh, for a, quite a few years, almost a decade. Some people wrote articles noting that Torvalds had publicly acknowledged the important role of the GPL at LinuxCon. Shortly thereafter, however, Torvald blasted GPL enforcement. A week ago, we saw at least two articles about exactly that. Journalists then saw a rant in the mailing list and decided to inform readers regarding Torvald's public uh, rant against conservancy. 
A few more articles about the subject have been published since, the, since, and they serve to reinforce suspicions that Sandler, not just Khan from the Conservancy, got pushed out of the Linux Foundation, causing a lot of backlash about a year ago. The backlash was about abandonment of funds, material support, to the Conservancy. It happened after VMware had joined the Linux Foundation and the Conservancy got involved in a GPL enforcement lawsuit against VMware. But here comes the interesting thing. An observation which I mentioned last week in passing over at Tux Machines. VMware recently poached Dirk Hondel from Intel uh, and, it, and uh, it was what, who, him who interviewed Torvalds as his trusted colleague less than a fortnight ago at LinuxCon just shortly before the above attack on Kuhn et al. It reinforces the suspicion that this Conservancy's decision to uphold the GPL on behalf of a client m made Hondel an enemy and then by in inference made Torvald somewhat of an enemy. Remember that a lot of ex-Microsoft executives now run VMware. They, and the company famously violates the GPL. This has been known for many years. Just as Microsoft did when it created a shim for its proprietary backdoor compatible Hyper-V, um, which is basically a compatibil another uh, basically compatibility layer that they added to VMware so you could use certain types of um, processors that would usually only work in, uh, that would, uh, basically it's a, it's a compatibility layer that allows you to use different operating, let's say if you're using a Windows operating system, on a Linux machine and you're on, on VMware, then you can you would turn on Hyper-V uh, if you wanted to have, uh, if you had a certain type of processor, like an AMD processor, for example, I believe, is how that works. Could be wrong. Um, anyways, the above observations came out late. I did not wish to write about the subject, but when Microsoft attacked Linux when, with patents, it became too much to skip. I, I only say Linux because it's Android in this case. How long before the Linux Foundation is truly entirely capable of defending Linux from patent lawsuits and upholding the GPL? Because Linux foes and GPL foes develop financial strings, making them harder or riskier to publicly criticize. So this is a, a perfect example of um, capitalism uh, run amok, uh, anarcho-capitalism, um, copywriting your fucking name, copywriting your goddamn, uh, your DNA. I mean, they, they don't care about your rights at all, uh, Windows or Mac or Android or Red Hat. They just want to fucking make you pay for every little goddamn line of code because they think they're very, very special, just like the Natalists that I'm always talking about on this channel. So, uh, special thanks to um, the person who wrote this article, Dr. Roy Shustowitz. Um, yeah, great. This guy runs a great website. You guys should all check it out. TechRights.org. Peace.